Hello and welcome to the World Beyond Belief. I'm again Paul Marco. And as you can see from my attire, it's a little chilly here in the Hacienda Beyond Belief. But we're warm and we're going this year. We've had several uh, interactions on gang stalking already this year. And I think between the uh, wonderful PhD experts that we have that just happen to be target individuals, we're getting a handle on how to move forward on this thing. Stay tuned for that. We're coming up with many videos on that. And uh, today, again to blow our minds, we have Dr. Eric Karlstrom uh, to tell us what he's found out. He's deep, deep research into the subject. Probably one of the most leading researchers, if not the prime researcher on the subject. He's going to tell us what he's uncovered, and we're, talk, and we're going to talk about going forward with this. So this is an exciting time, and this is going to be an extremely exciting interview. And I know I'm not overselling it, because it always blows me away when he's here. So welcome to the world beyond belief, Dr. Kallstrom. It's an honor to have you here from an undisclosed location. Well, thank you, Dr. Dr. Mar thank you. Uh, Dr. Paul Marco, can you hear me? Yes. You're can you hear me? You're cutting in and out, but let's try to do it. And if, and if we have any trouble, we'll reconnect until we get it going. Okay. Okay. Well, um, yeah, this, we have had a series of interviews on, uh, on gang stalking. Uh, this is kind of the popular term. I think we can, we can, uh, increase our understanding of this phenomena, uh, by researching, and, and uh, I would like to report uh, what I've learned from a series of books that I've been reading that are now kind of uh, uh, all marked up. <laughs> this is a great book by Mark M. Rich called New World War Revolutionary Myths for Political Control, in which uh, He's got another one as well called the hidden agenda or the hidden evil, but this he, he exposes the enormous paper trail that underlies this phenomenon that we call gang stalking, including you know the the laws and executive orders Eric, that permit the military. Yes, Eric, you need to repeat the name of the book and the author because you kind of cut out during that thing. Okay, I'm sorry. The, the book is. Uh, the book is The New World War, Revolutionary Methods for Political Control. The author is Mark M. Rich. And it came out, I think, in 2011. Um, and he uh, documents the uh, military uh, papers uh, that pertain to what's going on now and the laws that have been passed and executive orders that allow the intelligence and military complex to target civilians. Um, and of course, there's a lot of legalese terms in there, but I would like to go through some of these terms with you today um, to show you and the audience how enormous this, this, uh, this, this system of uh, political and psychological control is it is global, it is interagency, and uh, this is, uh, uh, as we've established in the past, it's the modern extension of the FBI's COINTELPRO, counterintelligence program of the 60s and 70s, where they neutralized political dissidents and groups of dissidents uh, using a lot of these very same techniques. Uh, this is now married with uh, the, the uh, information and results that are coming out of the CIA's MK Ultra Mind Control programs. And then what I'd like to talk about tonight or today is uh, the, another component of this is uh, this is the modern extension of the Phoenix program, which was a CIA program in Vietnam in which they targeted the civilian quote unquote support system for the Viet Cong. And what it wound up to be was uh, a bounty hunting program where they would create lists and then they would go in and, uh, and neutralize, i.e. kill by many, many techniques, the civilian quote unquote infrastructure of Vietnam. This is a way to terrorize the population. And we have now uh, another excellent book that I would like to talk about. 
this fellow, Douglas Valentine, has written a book about the Phoenix program, which I haven't read yet, but I'm going to get. Uh, this one is, can come out this year. The CIA has organized crime, how illegal operations corrupt America and the world. And Douglas Valentine's about our age, and he's seen it all, and he's kept uh, going as a researcher and written uh, about how, you know, this underbelly of corruption has affected America and the world. Uh, he go has a couple great chapters on the Phoenix program and how that has morphed now into the Department of Homeland Security. And uh, this is a conclusion also that has come, uh, that is in, in, included in this book by Marshall Thomas, Monarch, the New Phoenix Program. Now, this is a slightly older book of uh, 2007, but he's come to the same conclusions. And uh, if you put these three together with, again, uh, the secret team, uh, the CIA and its allies in control of the United States and the world uh, by L. Fletcher Prouty, who was very high in Army intelligence and, in fact, was the liaison between the Army and the CIA for a seven or eight year period under, under Eisenhower's administration uh, with Alan Dulles as CIA director. You put this stuff together and, and it, uh, uh, it, it becomes much more clear uh, what we're dealing with here. Uh, and of course, we, we have to remember that most people who are targeted individuals around the world in this program are unaware. And this is by design. It's, 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 it's intended that they not be aware that they're being targeted. They're being neutralized, they're being destabilized, they're being destroyed uh, by a combination of, of, uh, of things, including non weapons which uh, includes what they call PSYOP, psychological operations. And we'll talk a little bit more about that because this is a vast field um, in the military. And, uh, and, and non-lethal weapons, of course, also include directed energy weapons, the so-called soft kill, silent kill, slow kill, um, but they actually do kill. They can be ramped up to kill. And this includes uh, microwaves, millimeter waves, acoustic, uh, waves and lasers, basically. And then, of course, the technology just goes on and on because the Pentagon has been doing this, you know, uh, over several decades with enormous budgets. And a lot of this is black budget. Yeah. A lot of it isn't black budget. But again, it, it's uh, very, high, very high tech. We can assume the Pentagon is at least 50 to 100 years ahead yeah. of the general population in terms of their technology. So, uh, uh, even going through books like this, I don't consider myself to be an expert. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just approaching the the true scope of this these these enormous uh, programs. It would be wonderful if you could get a military person uh, to come on your show and and talk about it from a military perspective because uh, this is what these guys are are paid to do and have been paid. to to do. We have lots and lots of experts. Get John B. Alexander or Michael Aquino or, or many of the, the uh, people who have been involved with these uh, uh, programs um, because they, they really are the experts on it. And if, if I could start, uh, Paul, with just giving some of the conclusions of these authors, um, then launch into it and I can get into more detail. Um, this is coming from Marshall Thomas, uh, who wrote Monarch, the New Phoenix Program. Uh, he has a 15-minute uh, YouTube, which you can uh, look at, in which he summarizes the program. I think he does an excellent job, so I will just, I'll just kind of uh, uh, state what he states. And, and I want to start broad, because ultimately this is a war between the haves and the have-nots. It's a war between the super, super rich, the point zero. 1% and less, and the rest of us. That's what it is. And he makes the point, and so does Douglas Valentine, and so does uh, Mark M. Rich. Uh, here's what Marshall Thomas says. He says, unwitting Americans and the citizens of other nations are facing a destabilization operation, one designed to bring down the existing world governments. It's all 195 or whatever existing world governments, and to institute a one-world government fascist dictatorship in its place. So now we have the context. 
as we'll see as we get into this, what you're doing is you're pitting large segments of the population, including military, intelligence, uh, civilian spies, um, against dissenters and others who have been designated as targets. And so you have to decide that society cannot, cannot last long. So, um, even to be careful how we expose this, because the, the, the double bind here is that if we attack and destroy the system, we attack and destroy the entire nation. And that is what the powers that be want. So what we need to do is go back to the Constitution and arrest and prosecute the guilty, mm -hmm. which, as we'll find, is an enormous number of people. Uh, remember, we did an excellent, I thought, well, I, I shouldn't say excellent, but we did a very detailed uh, program on 9-1-1 and the, the 46 drills that were yes. ongoing on the day of 9-11 that uh, were discovered by Webster Tarpley, the economic historian, PhD. Um, and what we found out there was uh, it was an enormous number of agencies involved. There's NATO, there's UN, there's the Air Force dominantly, uh, there's the New York Police Department, on and on and on. Well, I think there's a principle there. The principle is if you spread out the guilt so that the guilty outnumber right. <laughs> everybody else, how are you going to prosecute them? <laughs> and that, I think, is where we're at. Now, that said, not all people in those agencies would be in the know as to what the real implications of what they're doing are, for instance, in these drills that, you know, remove the warfighter right. planes, the fighter jets out of the right. D.C. area, et cetera. They're following orders. So we have to, you know, derail that system. But anyway, let me continue with Thomas's comment here. The U.S. intelligence agencies in conjunction with DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research uh, Project uh, Agency, Stanford Research Institute, Los Alamos National Laboratory, and companies like Raytheon and Lockheed have set up a counterinsurgency war. That's what they always do. What the CIA does every time. What they do is they go attack individuals in another country or the country. And then when people try to defend themselves, the CIA and the military label them as insurgents. Okay, now the CIA and the military are the counterinsurgency, so they're going to go after those insurgents. Well, they created the whole conflict in the first place right. and the insurgents are just the ones who are trying to to uh, to stay alive uh, so they've set up a ca counterinsurgency there's nothing that has changed and now it is applied is being applied worldwide uh, have set up a counterinsurgency war that is taking place on a worldwide basis aimed at potential enemies such as political activists and whistleblowers these targets are generally people with a high, very high IQ who are also capable of influencing the people around them, as well as having a history of political activism. Uh, then he says, uh, this counterinsurgency war that is being waged against these individuals is portrayed as a type of game, a stalking game, the most dangerous game. You know, what's, what's the, uh, the, the, the reality TV show, The Hunger Games, you know, perhaps called... Uh, uh, watch him run on some such game that is taking place on the internet so people can observe the targets using DARPA tracking technology, GPS technology, and RFID technology that follows the target everywhere they go, in their home, their car, their place of work, or even in cross-continental travel, anywhere on the surface of the earth. So I'm in Baja, California, and, I, and I'm sure I haven't gotten away from, you know, being monitored and surveilled. Uh, there is no way that the targets can escape this game, the stalking game. And then he goes on and he talks about how this is really a combination of psychological operations, which we call gang stalking, and uh, directed energy weapons, which we call uh, psychotronic or electronic warfare weapons. The uh, Combine them, it's all non-lethal weapons, NLW. And uh, we have documents, you know, from the CFR in 1995 saying we're going to have to use these on... Uh, uh, enemies of the state, basically, uh, internal enemies uh, who, you know, aren't getting with the program, and we're going to do it secretly, and we're going to do it in combination. And so that's, that's in the, so many documents, we're going to use these weapons in combination, we're going to use them secretly. And this is in, you know, scads of military documents, yeah. scads of military, and I'll give you some examples. 
but before before I do that, uh, let me just give you the conclusions of Marshall Thomas. And I think what we'll see is that in our previous discussions, we've gotten part of all of of the of the program. He's saying uh, that, that the modern gang stalking program is coming out of uh, again COINTELPRO. It's coming uh, FBI's COINTELPRO, CIA's MK Ultra. Uh, also, the fact that uh, the U.S. government has experimented non-consensually on over half a million people during the last 40, 50 years, uh, you know, in, in all kinds of experiments, radiation, uh, you know, et cetera, chemical, biological weapons, um, and, and, uh, and also the Phoenix program. And the Phoenix program is very, under, very important to understand the Phoenix program, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, then he says all three illegal programs have been enfolded into a single program using the military strategy known as force multiplication to accomplish three aims in one single ter terrible program of one, torture to modify behavior. So this is torture. They know it's torture. They want it to be torture. They know how to torture. <laughs> this is what they learned with the MK Ultra. Uh, two, experimentation to perfect the new weapons. Okay, we got that part in previous interviews. This is a weapon system that they're refining because they want to apply it more widely. And then three, neutralization of people on a hit list. Okay, so that's that's Thomas's synopsis. And he said he's this is back in 2007 when he wrote this, and we know more now. But he said uh, the case that this is occurring is based on four facts. And these are the bare bones case to avoid confusion, disinformation, and circular arguments that lead nowhere. And he says, uh, number one, MKUltra, the CIA's mind control experiments, took place at over 80 institutions, including 44 universities, 15 private companies, 12 hospitals, and three prisons. The current illegal program that he's calling Monarch, which we're calling gang stalking, uh, which the real name is unknown, uh, but we'll get to it in a minute. Yeah. It's equally complex. The four facts are all that is necessary to convince a reasonable person that this atrocity is really taking place and demands immediate action. Uh, he's uh, Next one, he's saying the microwave weapons, uh, directed energy weapons, like the added denial system, ADS, and millimeter radars are public electronic electromagnetic weapons you can buy one you get yourself the right magazine you can buy one you know and then maybe we just have a war between our neighbors you know it's like right. i'll get my little computer device that zaps you and you get your little computer device that zaps me <laughs> okay the russians used microwave weapon attack uh, weapons to attack the american embassy in moscow in the 1950s uh, in response the u.s began a secret crash program to develop microwave weapons uh, the next one, number three, there's a criminal history dating back to 1943, a prior pattern of criminal behavior all through the Cold War. Again, half a million U.S. citizens were used as human guinea pigs in nuclear, biological, and chemical uh, weapons development programs. And again, the FBI COINTEL program government had hit lists of political activists, and they executed them. If you were to tally up the battle between the FBI and the uh, and the, the Black Panthers, the uh, uh, FBI killed 28 Black Panthers. The Black Panthers didn't kill anybody in the FBI. So it's 28-0 in favor of the FBI. Right. And, of course, the FBI and the CIA were setting up these other cults, like the Seminese Liberation Army with Patty Hearst and, and also the Manson cults. I mean, these are these are ways to get into the society and, and play around with these, with these techniques and technologies and to use these cults for mind control uh, experiments, which they did, of course, yeah. especially after they were forced underground by the church committee hearings in 1975, which exposed over 10,000 illegal CIA operations between 1947 and 1975. Well, of course, now you've got that amount of time or a little bit, probably more since then. Now, how many illegal CIA operations have there been since 1975? I would guess uh, at least that many. And then the last one, credible witnesses, people who have testified that they are targets of classified non-lethal microwave weapons assaults and organized gang stalking. Uh, Tom has interviewed more than 200 targets in person and documented their story. Um, he, he found, unlike others, by the way, 
that most TIs are political activists or whistleblowers that are around 40 years old, have an above average IQ and share other commonalities. About 70% are women, apparently. The majority of targets fit a common profile similar to the victims of previous programs. And then he says, persons of interest, military intelligence officers, INSCOM, have worked since 1980 to develop non-lethal weapons for the Army. They publicly advocated using them on civilians to neuter people or neutralize people for the MK Ultra crimes of the CIA and uh, gave classified weapons to local law enforcement and others. So now these weapons are in the hands of law enforcement and even civilian agencies. And, and the DHS, of course, is operating, Department of Homeland Security is operating these fusion centers, 78 of them in all states and major cities. And so borderline and super, borderline and superstitions as part of a smokescreen cover-up. In other words, the CIA instigates and infiltrates cults. Um, military intelligence officers in charge of non-lethal weapons development and government physicists who invent non-lethal technologies for the Army are both loudly advocating borderline beliefs and superstitions like doomsday cults and remote sure. viewing. So we, we've really entered, uh, really gone over to the dark side. Our intelligence and military uh, definitely has gone over to the dark side. Um, uh, so this needs to be pointed out, corrected. Uh, Thomas talks about the five reforms that he sees as a way to end this secret, dirty war. Uh, one, open all records and secret archives. Two, disarm all electromagnetic weapons. Three, uh, have a Truth and Reconciliation Committee, TRC. Four, convene an international conference to ban all electromagnetic weapons. By the way, Dennis Kucinich tried to pass a bill in Congress in 2003 that would have done this, but he was voted down. Finally, an international bill of rights that is enforceable such that the state cannot crush its internal enemies. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the states crushing internal dissent and internal enemies and terrorize the domestic population so that the state uh, is unopposed in uh, in, in all things. Uh, if a president, impris president imprisons, tortures, or murders their political enemies, then they must be sure that they will end their days in a prison cell. And I added the little parentheses, or by firing squad. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't think there's enough punishment to, uh, to mete out to these no. individuals myself. I, th I think they've, they've, they're beyond the pale, uh, onto the dark side. Um, now, let me just uh, let me stop there, Paul, and, and uh, hear, hear from you. Uh, what, I, what I'm saying here is that uh, there is an enormous paper trail. The military, Congress, certainly the intelligence agencies have, have developed this program taking uh, technology, very secret technology, very high technology, um, and they have decided to make it global. And so what we're looking at, it's, it's, a, it's a global police state, much like we had under the Soviet Union, under the Cheka, which was terrorizing the people and did the Red Terror, uh -huh. much like the East German Stasi, which, in which one out of six citizens were enlisted to become citizen spies and harass and intimidate and surveil their fellow citizens. And this then became the state police or the Stasi. And it was also versions of that in Hungary and Poland and Czechoslovakia uh, and Portugal. So anytime you get a, a really draconian police state, they won't want to you know, put this, this blanket of terror and deception on the pe people so that the people are afraid to express themselves. Essentially, of course, this is entirely anti uh, the Constitution. It's right. it's antithetical to the U.S. Constitution, which and the Declaration of Independence that say that governments are instituted amongst humans so that uh, our uh, God-given rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are protected. And when governments fail in this basic responsibility, it is our duty and responsibility to alter or abolish those governments. Well. We've gone by beyond that point. Uh, so now we have a real challenge. I mean, uh, th this government has gone off the deep end. And I would just, just to kind of bring it back to the bigger picture, I would say that 
you know, it's an overthrow. We've had an overthrow of our government. We've had several. I think one, yes. one was in 1913 when the Federal Reserve was established by European bankers, the Rothschilds and their agents, the Warburgs and the Schiffs, et cetera. Yes. Uh, and then when Kennedy was killed, I think this was another overthrow. Um, our country was taken over by Wall Street and its its power and minions. And I think 9 one has to be seen also as a coup, uh, not so much against the government, which they already controlled, but against the American people, right. which still had a voice. So since 9-1-1, what we've seen is, is an attempt to completely um, submerge and, and uh, neutralize the American population as a as a force. Now, what's so fascinating to me is that Donald Trump got in and he's being inaugurated on this very day, uh, the 20th of January on a Friday, uh, 2017. Uh, he's, he's won on an anti-globalization right. uh, platform. And yet all of this, you know, this draconian state is to bring in one world government and globalization. So now we have a very schizophrenic situation where Trump is advocating for nationalism. Well, if he really is going to advocate for nationalism, I think he's going to have to stand up for the rights of the American people on the Constitution. So we will see if Trump weighs in on this issue and does something constructive, because theoretically he has the power uh, to call off the dogs of war right. off of the American people and the people of the world. So America has become the 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 dark uh, the dark empire uh, we, we are the beast if you want to go to the bible right. uh, we are the second beast the first beast probably israel and if you and we were the second beast worships the first beast and uh, if you want to go to that you know uh, uh -huh. symbology but if you want to see what you know uh, the american system will look like look at israel because they're uh you know the israeli special forces or whoever the the military will just uh, go right into the air it's owned by the Palestinians. They'll they'll bulldoze the house down. They'll lock up the Palestinians. No due process. No accusations. No, uh, you know, completely uh, uh, totalitarian. So um, that's kind of where I think we are, and uh, we're in as as the old old expression goes, deep doo doo. Right, deep doo doo. That's <laughs> that's a great way to. Now, those are the kind of things you get, you'll get quoted <laughs> on. Yeah. You'll get quoted on. No, I think <laughs> I think that you're exactly right. And what I think is really interesting about this time, it certainly is the apocalypse, which means the unveiling, uh, the externalization of the hierarchy. If you want to find out who's gang stalking, what they're doing, and about these weapons, you can find it out. You can, it's written in books. Uh, same with geoengineering. You can trace it back to the patents, and the patents are all held by the Rockefellers. You, if you want to find out about Pizzagate, they've solved Pizzagate. Well, human beings know who did Pizzagate. They know what's going on there. But well, we're still conditioned to want to go to the government. We're still conditioned to go back to the triangle. We're still conditioned to go back to the institutions that are rotten. And uh, I think now we know, now we need a strategy to move forward. And I don't think it's going to be lawsuits. I don't think it's going to, the, the only glimmer of hope in that, I think, would be um, Trump. Now, I don't know who Trump works for, but it seems like if there are several factions of globalists, which I think there probably are, I mean, these, these people are snakes. They compete with one another. If you've ever been in a large organization, you go up above the vice president level, and they're not, they're fighting for one cause, but they're out for their own career. And they're psychopaths, so they'll do anything to get there. So what we've got here are competing psychopaths to rule the government uh, takeover, the globalist takeover of the world. So. That's what we're watching. I think what we're seeing with, with Trump, and this is my own opinion, I think we're seeing another faction. I think we're seeing the Trump, uh, Putin, uh, Nigel Farage uh, faction 
against the uh, the Soros Clinton, the the old guard that were really pushing for total military state. This is a more charismatic kind of um, intellectual, if I could say that, uh, type faction that seems to be taking over. Now, how they're going to run the uh, intelligence agencies is going to be the big thing. Or does the intelligence agency run them? I mean, I think the intelligence agency basically works for the money, the, the Rothschilds and that whole organization. Now, is the, intelligence, is the intelligence agency, are the intelligence agencies above the president, or is, is the president going to have some control over, um, over well, those? Out, yeah, and, and, and we... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, we addressed this. We addressed this when we uh, talk, had our interview about Alan Dulles. Yeah. And Alan Dulles, of course, was the first director of the CIA. Uh, and uh, uh, going back to 1953... And he actually bragged that he and his brother, John Foster Dulles, who was Secretary of State, both of whom who had been uh, Wall Street lawyers for Sullivan and Cromwell, the largest Wall Street legal firm, which represented the Roth, Rockefellers, et cetera, uh, um, that he controlled uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower. He, he bragged that he did, and it, no doubt he did. Um, uh, and I would argue, and, and, and Fletcher Prouty, the, the author of The Secret Team here, um, uh, he also argues that it would be very, very difficult for one individual to, to stand up to the power of the intelligence agencies. Yeah. William O. Douglas, the Supreme Court Justice, said that very thing after Kennedy was assassinated. It, it seems like Kennedy might have been an example of somebody who did try to st stand up and be, be the president. And, of course, we saw the public execution yeah. uh, of President Kennedy. Uh, he was mutilated. I mean, they, they don't know where his brain is. Yeah. It's gone. Uh, uh, this, this was obviously a, 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 an occult-style hit, uh, um, if you get into that aspect of it. But it was also a political hit. And yeah. uh, uh, the power structure included the CIA, for sure, and, you know, the FBI and many, many other factions. Um, uh, you know, just just decided uh, his his program was was not to their liking, and uh, took him out. So I that's you're right. I mean, the question is, can Trump actually affect uh, the situation now, or are we so completely ruled by um, intelligence agencies like the CIA? The CIA is above all the others. The NSA can't touch the CIA. The FBI has no jurisdiction over the CIA. And the CIA has absolutely no uh, legal constraints. They do what they want, when they want, where they sure. want. Sure. So they're above the law, totally. And of course, as you say, they're working for Wall Street and the financial sector. So this has always been the case ever since it was formed. Um, there seems to be enough propaganda to make us think that uh, the CIA is is somehow working in our interest. And one thing I'd like to really emphasize here, Paul, if I can, is over the years, the CIA and the NSA and the FBI and the alphabet soup agencies, we have 17, I think, intelligence agencies, have, have used this term, uh, it's national security, uh, uh, ma'am, uh, you know, well, you know, we can't tell you about this, or we've classified this program because national concern, uh, security. Well, likewise, this issue of national interests. So the, the State Department is protecting our national interests in, in uh, Iraq or Chile or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, anybody who knows anything about the State Department for decades would know that the national interest is defined as the corporate interests, yeah. the business interests. Likewise, the national security interests have to be understood as protecting the power structure. It had nothing to do with my exactly. security or your security. In fact, it's the opposite. It, it, it's, it's protecting the security of the system, and which is a corrupt criminal system. Right. So the sooner Americans wake up to this basic fact, you know, the sooner we can start to deal with it. Uh, that's what I hope we're starting, we're, we're, we're helping yes. that to happen. Let, let me give you a couple of definitions here. Okay. Uh, this is right out of the book New World War, 
uh, revolutionary methods for political control. And this coming out of many, many, many military documents. It's called 4GW, Fourth Generation Warfare. Okay, this is what they're doing. This is what the gang stalking is. It's a form of political information warfare waged against civilians by a state or other entity. It utilizes civilians and the military, indeed all of society, to target civilian adversaries, also known as domestic state enemies, insurgents, extremists, non-state actors, cells of fanatics, and sometimes even citizen terrorists who value national sovereignty, for instance, <laughs> or pose some other perceived threat to the state's interests. Right. Okay, so here we have this whole system turned upside down where the, the power structure is, is, is got the guns pointing inward at the individuals who actually believe in the Constitution yeah. Yeah. and who believe in national sovereignty because they want to merge with the world government. Uh, and then uh, to go on with that, anyone disseminating, disseminating information contrary to the state's national security interests may become an enemy. Uh -huh. Okay, so here's here's why I'm an enemy, for instance. I have a website, 911nwo.com. I have one called naturalclimatechange.org. Um, in, in these sites, I wrote an article in 2002. As a professor of geography at California State University, Stanislas, I wrote a rather lengthy academic-style article called uh, Reflections on the Origins of 911, Three Scenarios. Uh -huh. And in 2002, when there was a lot of fear in the land and people were not sure they wanted to put their name on anything, I put my name on that thing. Well, obviously that seems to have gotten me on a list. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that I challenged the war on terror narrative, that I challenged the 911 narrative, this makes, and of course the global warming nonsense narrative, uh, this makes me a threat to the national security of the state. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so this is why I've been targeted now with directed energy weapons two or three times at least, and I can talk about that later. Uh, and now that I've read more about it, I understand that I was targeted as early as 2006 um, uh, with directed energy weapons. And uh, uh, let me just continue here. The goal of the new war is the psychological collapse of the new enemies using a combination of tactics. Defeating the new enemies involves the synchronized use of non-lethal directed energy weapons, isolation, deprivation. They're really big on sleep deprivation and social deprivation. They want to isolate you from your support structure. And psyops against individuals and groups. And this is also called the Capital T, capital A, which means target audience. You you know, it's like the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer, my friend, is in all these uh, alphabet soup acronyms. Um, it's there in spades. I mean, it's it, all of the programs that we're experiencing yeah. are laid out by the by the military, by the think tanks, et cetera. Uh, the TA is a target audience. And of course, T, uh, that includes the TIs, the targeted individuals. Mm -hmm. A 4GW, for fourth generation warfare, is more or less synonymous with, and they've got other position papers and terms, unconventional warfare, UW, and many, many, many articles about that in the military literature, irregular warfare, capital I, capital R, asymmetrical warfare, capital A, capital W, low intensity conflict, capital L I C. Military Operations Other Than War, capital M-O-O-T-W, and Network-Centric Warfare, capital N-C-W. This new war involves international interagency cooperation between the middle, military, federal, and local law enforcement, non-governmental organizations, NGOs, intergovernmental organizations, IGOs, the civilian population, including private voluntary organizations, PVOs and private government contractors. And of course, InfraGuard of the FBI, et cetera. And there's many, many of these. Uh, this multinational force, MNF, 
involves NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and the UN, or, or, or the United Nations, yeah. and is termed Civilian Military Operations, CMO. Now, I have to interject here that uh, Doug Valentine in the CIA as organized crime mentions that since 9-11, and I haven't checked his numbers, but he says since 9-11, $8 trillion of taxpayer money has been taken out of social programs and put into the new national security establishment, which is kind of organized by Department of Homeland Security, as we'll get into. Okay, so then uh, go on with this uh, 4GW. In its unconventional warfare manual, the U.S. Army states that these new enemies will be hunted down, isolated, denied critical services, and attacked. Okay, there it is, Catherine, Dr. Catherine Horton, who's being attacked in England, and a host of other TIs around the world. I mean, this is in the literature, in U.S. Army documents. This will happen all over the planet, in your cities, in your towns, anywhere that pockets of resistance remain. By the way, your cities and your towns, the internet, uh, any channel of communication, has now been redefined by the military as the battle space. We're living in the battle space, Paul. You're living in the battle space. Uh, the, the kind of interview we're doing now is the battle space. Uh, inter the internet, uh, email communication is yeah. the battle space. So everything is a war for these guys. And they have a lot of money and a lot of smart people. So we've got our work cut out for us. Yes. Okay, in his non-lethal weapons to gain relevancy in future conflicts article, 2002 issue of National Defense, John B. Alexander, who's one of the big advocates for non-lethal weapons, uh, said that terrorists who live amongst the civilian population in densely populated cities around the world will be identified and attacked with non-lethal weapons. He says, technically, the United States must find, fix, isolate, and destroy terrorist cells and hostile command and control ne networks as quickly as they are identified. The only solution is to eradicate the entire organism. You start reading this stuff, and it's just, <laughs> it just goes on and on. Uh, 1995 report, non-lethal technology, non-lethal technologies, military options and implications. The Council on Foreign Relations, they're, they're again, they're a little bit above the CIA, as we saw in the, uh, in the interview with uh, Alan Dulles. Uh -huh. He always worked, for, he, is, he in fact, he was one of the founders of the CFR in his early career, and then he presided over the Kennedy assassination half a century later. But he always worked for the CFR, even as director of the, as the CIA. The CFR suggested that in a covert war against a global enemy, secrecy must be used to preserve the effectiveness of these new weapons and to create confusion as to the source of the attacks. You have to start to get into this mindset. I mean, these guys are killers. This, yeah. uh, your number one op, the number one goal is to kill. Mm -hmm. And now we have lots of clever ways to do it, see? And this is really fun. It's like playing a video game, you know? So you can just imagine the Department of, Department of Homeland Security with thousands, 250,000 employees yeah. and a, a budget of $40 billion a year. Uh, and and they're, they're, they're people that's like they're playing video games. Of, let's kill that guy. Let's kill that guy, you know? And, and <laughs> well, Pac-Man or whatever, that's you know, nice. they do, you know? Um, in his 1970 book, Between Two Ages, the United States in the Technotronic Era, Trilateral Commissioner co-founders, a big new Brzezinski, who's been a very prominent uh, advisor to Obama, notes that new technologies, including directed energy weapons, will be available to leaders of the, of the developed nations to conduct secret warfare, of which only a small number of security forces would be needed. Well, um, we can go on through the definitions. I mean, these are defined in military documents. Asymmetrical warfare, interagency, international operation, which takes place among the civilian population. U.S. Army refers to this as population-centric war. Civilians are now used as surrogate forces. And this, of course, is a big part of the gang stalking, all this street theater and, and but not um, vigilante uh, um, neighborhood watch. Um, uh, th this is what's going on. Uh, people, uh, citizen informers, are paid uh, either full-time or part-time, or they're volunteers uh, working with these government programs, but they're not allowed to divulge that. 
So now you've militarized the entire society through these networks. And this is all part of the, the system. Um, so uh, then we get into, let's see, uh, definition of insurgents, which would be me. Yeah, me too. Under, under, <laughs> under this, the, ins, the DOD's Dictionary of Military and Associated Terms defines an insurgent as a member of a political party who rebels against established leadership. Well, by writing that paper saying that 911 was an inside job, which any idiot can see that it was, yeah, you, did it. you have to be a, you have to have, you have to have, have developed a double think as an Orwell. You have to, yeah. you have to have learned, you know, two and two equals five yeah. uh, to not see that 911 was an inside job. Yeah. I mean, that's how obvious it is. By saying that, of course, then I become an insurgent. The, and of course, then that allows them to be the counterinsurgents and to come down and, and squash me and others with, right. you know, gang stalking and directed energy weapons. Uh, these insurgents are those who try to persuade the population to accept political change. Those who resist tyranny nonviolently may be considered insurgents. Rand, the think tank for the Pentagon, states that the new enemies are those using, quote, information attacks to strike against the large corporate or trade or political institutions. And most of these, they say, are non-state actors. Uh, the CFR document states, in transformation of a process, there are often elements less subject to evolution. See, now apparently I'm not evolved enough, you know. I'm not evolved enough to want global government or something. You know? They suggest that the U.S. military change its tactics to neutralize these people who are not evolved enough. Hey, the military says, yeah, great, give us some money, we'll do it. It's what we're good at, man. Yeah. Um, and the ones that we're, what we do. <laughs> and the ones that we're finding your gang stalking are way above the average intelligence. They're bright people who are able to see through stuff. They're in touch with you know, their own right brain also. So they're not only bright, but they're also aware that threatens their game. Well, it is an information war. It's our information yep. and versus their information to establish the legitimacy of the state and the military. Now, the military is concerned about this legitimacy thing, and they've got documents saying that, you know, like we have to be perceived as legitimate. Yeah. So one of the tactics that we can and must use, of course, is to point out that the government are the terrorists. Yes. Um, and not us. <laughs> now, let me let me give you a uh, let me give you an example of that. Here is a statement by the Department of Defense. <laughs> documenting that fact. Terrorism will be used by the MNF, multinational force, if necessary. Terrorism is an act of violence against a civilian population to achieve a political objective. This means a HN, host nation, government, including the US, will carry out large scale acts of violence against its own population to achieve political objectives. There it is in the military documents. We are going to carry out terrorist acts for political purposes. Yes. And of course they have. This is what they do now. Each of these, each of these shooters, you know, these, uh, you know, Aurora and you know the thing in in uh, Florida and the Boston oh. Marathon bombing. I mean, this is all CIA stuff. These guys are manipulating others through mind control and and through uh, also uh, I think through through the gang stalking. Uh, directed energy weapons uh, to actually do the killing. I mean, if you've got a fragmented human being who is now a weapons platform that can be triggered from one personality to another uh, to commit a crime, the Manchurian candidate, which of course the CIA perfected that back in the early 60s, right. um, uh, then then these people make the perfect uh, criminals psych because they're actually uh, kind of robots at this point. They're automatons. Exactly. Um, so the CIA has these technologies. Uh, perhaps the, you're familiar with the case of the the uh, the guy who went kind of ballistic in the in the uh, naval yard and and took out his gun and started yeah. shooting people. Here's and the on the barrel, the rifle he had written, he had scratched in the barrel. This is my ELF weapon. Well, ELF stands for extremely low frequency. Yeah. 
So he himself was was a target of these uh, directed energy weapons. And he went over the edge, as anybody would, as anybody yeah. will. Sure. Because this technology can kill you, it can make you crazy, it can, the voice of God uh, can, you know, just drive you nuts. And uh, it meant to do so. So uh, there it is, the confession in the military documents that they are the terrorists. Um, also on, I have five recent posts on my website, which is gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com. And uh, also these same posts on my 911nwo.com website. Uh, the, the gang stalking website kind of morphs out of the 911 website. Um, that define these terms, that give the laws leading up to this present situation, that compare the modern uh, gang stalking operation with the Phoenix program, um, and uh, that give uh, trans translate uh, or transcribes uh, uh, Marshall Thomas's 15-minute uh, uh, video, uh, and you can look at the video there too. And and then also uh, some uh, put some of the uh, his main conclusions from his book there. Um, so. Uh, and then one more, these five new posts on my websites uh, talk about the similarities between the, the uh, gang stalking program and the Phoenix program. And it's very interesting that I think a lot of uh, psychological warfare has gone into even the terms. Gang stalking gives you the impression of, you know, gangs in L.A. going after you. Of course, it's not that. It's, it's the whole system. Right. It's the whole government, military, intelligence, local authorities, and civilian vigilantes against you. With all the high tech that the military has been developing, you know, often in secret for the last, uh, you know, half a century. So our terms for stalking are a little bit uh, limited, you know. Uh, the typical synonyms are organized stalking, cause stalking, community stalking, vigilante stalking, multi-stalking, gaslighting. Uh -huh. You find those on the computer. Uh, all of those uh, don't mention the, uh, the the psyops that's gone into this, or the uh, directed energy weapons that are going into this, or they're called the non-lethal weapons. So these are very limiting terms, um, and we need to break out of kind of this conceptual straitjacket. I think maybe a better term would be organized stalking electronic warfare, or psyops electronic warfare. Yeah or um, uh, the U.S. military's unconventional war unconventional against domestic person. targets, <laughs> yeah. or a modern global interagency Phoenix program, if we can get that concept resurrected. Uh, here are some, uh, some synonyms that uh, Valentine uses for the Phoenix program. And again, he wrote a book about it. Uh, and he's using descriptors and terms that were used back in the day, back in the late 60s when the program was, was uh, at its height. By the way, in a 14-month period, uh, 24,000 some civilians were killed uh, in the Phoenix program uh, between 1967 and 68 or something like that. And uh, amongst the killers were uh, John Kerry, uh, our Secretary of State under under Obama, or, yeah, and uh, Bob Kerry. These guys were in the Phoenix program as commanders and both would have killed discriminate, uh, would have killed civilians that had been getting to be killed. So, in a sense, they're made men and they were blood on their hands. Of course. We were talking about the Phoenix program. You know what I'd like to know? Give us a little refresher on the Phoenix program, uh, Professor. Sure. Well, okay, I will do that. And well, let me just continue, Paul, okay, if I could. Yeah, uh, the the synonyms that have been used for this uh, Phoenix program, because I think they are applicable to our gang stalking. Right. Sergeant Ed Murphy, who was uh, actually running it, uh, the, the guy the guy's name was uh, Brick Brickham, who actually invented it, and then a guy named Robert Comer was the point man in DC that worked with Lyndon Johnson on this, and it was got a lot of support. Uh, the interesting thing about the Phoenix program. Uh, is that it's considered the major success of the Vietnam War by our, our leaders. Here now is a way we can neutralize 
the domestic population. So this became the prototype then for what was happening in Central America, all the death squads in the yeah, 1980s. It became the prototype for the death squads in Afghanistan and Iraq in the early 21st century. And uh, it is now the prototype for our gang stalking. So this is why it's important now to look at some of the synonyms that have been used for, for the Phoenix program. Uh, one by Ed Murphy, a bounty hunting program. You put a bounty on somebody's head, you go get them. Uh, another one, uh, political warfare. Another one, psychological warfare. Another one, deniable population control. Um, death squad operations. Hunter killer teams. Political mass murder. Political neutralization warfare. A highly bureaucratic system to dispense anyone or thing that cannot be ideologically Ideologically assimilated. Isn't that nice? Ideologically assimilated. I love that. <laughs> you have to be an idiot. You have to be an idiot. Right. Yeah, no, idiot there was a fool, a double minded fool who, yeah. who, you know, thinks two and two is six. You know. these uh, death these, lists. These synonyms are the best definition for the Phoenix program you could have presented. Yeah, the well, we're still working on it. Okay, we're still go. working on it. Death lists, targeting the civilian infrastructure of the Viet Cong, of course. Quote, the greatest blackmail scheme ever invented, because you don't want to get on that list. That's right. Uh, program to terrify the civilian population into submission. A protection racket. An extrajudicial extra judicial system. A mechanism to extend the war indefinitely. Because now you're always attacking the civilians and you always have a war. This counterinsurgency war is always going on. Um, uh, unstated policy, murdering civilians. Yeah. Uh, the next one, intentional corruption of collaborating officials, including drug trafficking. We're seeing that happening all over the United States and the world now. This is this is a prototype of, of operation. We need to read Doug Valentine's book to understand it. A quote unquote pacification program. Pacific. A quota system for neutralizations. Again, they had a quota system in the Phoenix program of 1,800 neutralizations per month. And guys like John Kerry and Bob Kerry, the officers had to go out and, you know, kill that many to get, you know, to get their demerit, or their, get their merits, I guess, their merit pay or whatever the equivalent was. Uh, and then again, in July 15, 1971, it was reported that 26,843 Vietnamese citizens, non-military were neutralized in the previous 14 months. So I got my years off a little bit. And the National Interrogation Centers, NIC, and the Provincial Interrogation Centers, the PICs, were actually torture centers. And they were uh, part of a network of the Phoenix program that, that uh, coordinated the interagency operations, much like the fusion centers and the Terrorism Task Force of the FBI. Okay, so that's those are the synonyms. L let me tell you a little bit about the Phoenix program here, because I, because I did write that out, uh, the description from, uh, um, from Valentine here. You know, we could, we're we're still just kind of scratching the surface right. because again, so much money and time and and you know has been put into this. I do want to get into the psychological operations, but let's go to the, uh, uh, the Phoenix program. Let's see here. There it is. Okay, Phoenix program created by the CIA in Saigon, Vietnam in 1967 to neutralize the leaders and supporters of the communist-led insurgency in South Vietnam, referred to by the CIA as the Viet Cong Infrastructure, or VCI. Uh, these VCI infrastructure civilians were patriots resisting foreign aggression, but they were considered as spies and terrorists. American officials wrote laws that allowed US, the US military to detain, torture, and kill them by every means possible, including B-52 raids, battalion-sized cordon and search operations, and death squads. The Phoenix program evolved from a rifle shot approach to neutralize enemy leaders into a program of systematic repression for the political control of the South Vietnamese people. It sought to accomplish this through a highly bureaucratized system of disposing of people who could not be ideologically assimilated. Mm -hmm. The CIA found a legal basis for the program in 
emergency decrees and administrative detention laws that enabled American advisors to detain, torture, and kill national security offenders without due process. Within this extra legal judicial system with its Stalinist security communities, the VCI was anybody who didn't support the puppet government. To be neutral or to advocate for peace was viewed as supporting terrorism. Yeah. Proof wasn't required, just the word of an anonymous informer. The psychological warfare aspect of the Phoenix program was so pervasive that people had to watch every word they said. Uh, modeled by its creator, Nelson Brickham on Ford Motor Company's command post structure. The CIA used a quota system as we talked about. The Phoenix fulfilled its destiny, this is again Valentine's words, in the wake of 911 and became the template for policing the empire and fighting its eternal war on terror. So successful were Phoenix operations in overthrowing the Ba'athist party regime in Iraq, that was Saddam Hussein's party, that David Kilcullen, one of the U.S. government's top terrorism advisors to Obama and Bush and to uh, Petraeus, General Petraeus, said in 2004, he called in an article for a global Phoenix program. Guess where we are? We've got a global Phoenix program. It's called gang stalking, for lack of a better term. This process began immediately after 9-11 with the Repressive Patriot Act and a series of presidential executive orders that have since legalized the administrative detention and murder of American citizens said to be involved in terrorism. In a 2010, the Washington Post reported the Military Joint Special Operations Command maintains a target list that includes several Americans. In 2013, Attorney General Eric Holder announced that President Obama, quote, has authority to use drone strikes to kill Americans on U.S. soil. So the bureaucratic groundwork is being laid as well, just as the Phoenix program had its, quote, intelligence operations and coordination centers where interagency efforts were coordinated and quotas were met and, you know, targets were met uh, in terms of, you know, quotas of whatever, 1,200 a month. Uh, these were established in every province and district in South Vietnam, Vietnam. The Department of Homeland Security, which came out of the 2002 Homeland Security Act, has now established fusion centers in every state and major city. And the FBI has established joint terrorism task forces to coordinate representatives from every police, security, military, and civic organization in every state and major city. So <clears throat> what we're talking about um, is humongous. It's, it's enormous. Uh, and uh, again, we're st still learning about it, but uh, uh, we're getting better insights. Right. This is an incredible download of information. And I, for one, thank you, someone who can do research, who can read and retain what they read and see associations between other things that they read to download with us, download on us the situation that's going on. Because first of all, they're losing their most important tool, which is secrecy. By you doing this research and us getting this out, they lose more and more secrecy. Now, I know it's the apocalypse and the unveiling, but this program, if everyone knew about this program, you see, I think there was a, a major psychological operation that started in the 50s to whitewash the CIA <coughs> and the FBI. I mean, there were the... Um, Catherine's website is called stop007.org, which I think is incredible because that's what we're trying to do. What we've got to do through taking the lid off of this thing is to, re, to get people to see what the intelligence agency headed up, agencies headed up by the CIA are really doing. They're not, they're not out there uh, doing good things or FBI investigating Waco. They're causing Waco. They're causing. They're the ones that are trafficking the drugs. They're the ones that are doing this gang stalking. And 
this gangster trafficking the children. Yeah. Right. It isn't just it isn't just us that are now outspoken that are going to be targets of this. You're going to be targets of this if you're listening to this. And if your response is to duck and cover, there's no hope for us. The only response to this is to get up and learn more. Um, we're going to be together as a team, Eric and I and Catherine and uh, other TIs as they come on board to see what we can do about this. Um, I think I think their biggest weakness in this is their the organization. They're in their they all report up to enormous organizations. And you talk about spending trillions of dollars. Well, most of that money doesn't go to the operation. Most of that money goes to the bureaucracy. And the bureaucracy creates a big, clunky, hard to move kind of uh, thing that overshadows this whole program. We don't have that. We're autonomous. So we certainly, with, armed with our information, have a definite uh, advantage now that they have to come out. And if, if the likes of Trump, now I'm not saying he'll do anything or can do anything, is uh, taking, having people take a hard look at this uh, operation, this warfare uh, that's going against us, I think it, it, it could cause the crack in the armor that we really need. Uh, your listing of the synonyms was so um, cold-hearted, explanatory, direct. I, I can't believe how, how incredibly um, insightful those were. Also, think- Well, Paul, let me- Go ahead. Go ahead. Go, sorry, go ahead. I think the propaganda thing is the first piece because they propagandized the CIA and the FBI and the Mossad and all those other alphabet agencies as being of somehow a benefit to you. They're not. We need to get out some truth about that. And I think that's what Eric is trying to do today. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, you know, again, on the uh, bestiary of military terms, that uh, this is a post that I've just made on my two websites uh, uh, related to this, and I think bestiary is kind of an <laughs> interesting uh, uh, way to start it, because I think we are talking about the beast here. Yeah. Um, but if you go through the this bestiary of terms, anybody can go through that, and I'm still working on it to flesh it out. They can understand because these are coming out of military publications uh, and CFR publications, et cetera. Uh, we can understand what we're up against. Now, okay, uh, let me go through a term here. We talked about fourth generation warfare, yeah. which is uh, 4GW. Well, one of the most effective uh, mobile tactical units that they have to conduct this is called C4ISR, now, C2W is command and control warfare. Any, any warfare has to have a, a command and control, you know, and communication. Yes. Yes. So then they added communication center to make it C3. Well, then you add computers and you get C4, command, control, communications, computer right. center that utilizes intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Now, let me just go through the definition of what these C4 ISR centers are, because there could be one in your neighborhood. Um, it says multiple interacting components of C4 ISRs include battle space, again, the world is the battle space now, mm -hmm. monitoring, battle space monitoring, awareness, understanding, sense making, command intent, battle space management, synchronization, and information systems. C4 ISR centers can be mobile or stationary or virtual. That is to say, strictly based on computer interactions. Right. Each military service has its own tactical mobile C4 ISR system. The Navy and Marines use the ForceNet. The Air Force uses Command Control Constellation, C2 Constellation. The Army uses Land WarNet and Win T. 
each type of the C4I SR system is connected to the global information grid, which is based on satellites. So they can locate you and me and anything on the planet to within a foot based on this, uh, you know, geographic positioning station kind of thing, GPS uh -huh. and uh, computers. Uh, the C4 system, the C4 system instructs human nodes that are interacting with the TIA, TI, that's the target individual, in real time. So let's say you're a civilian who's been hired full time, and there's a there's a guy uh, uh, called Street Preacher who's got a little YouTube where he kind of accosts this big fat guy. In a uh, in a grocery store and and says hey you're you're wh why are you gang stalking you know he says well and the guy the guy just you know once in a while people are going to be honest and he just says well I'm paid and he yeah. says well, what are you paid he says well I'm a GS12 well if you know anything about you know GS uh, the government pay scale GS means government service and yeah. and the uh, 12 pretty high yeah. so here's a guy who's making a lot of money spying on his and, and uh, surveilling and harassing his fellow human beings. And then Karen, the Karen Stewart, the ex-NSA whistleblower, who's now a TI, uh, would get into the habit when, when one of these skits was going on and people were harassing her in the street, she'd just say, you know, why are you doing this? How much are you being paid? And once in a while, somebody will answer and say, well, one guy said, I get $100 if I look at my iPhone and I see I go through a list of photographs and I see, you know, I'm able to connect the photograph in my, you know, application, my app for my iPhone phone with you. And then I report in the time and the location of you to the, you know, one of these mobile centers. And then I, then they log in a hundred dollars for my account. So this would be somebody who's kind of gaming the system part right. time. So if, if you're driving down to work, for instance, and you see people parked along the road, you know, looking at their iPhones, well, that's what they might be doing, you know. Right. They're making money spying on you. And, of course, others are making money doing these gaslighting, you know, operations, harassing you at street theater, et cetera. So what we have now then is uh, what they call CMO, Civilian Military Operations, which combine military, federal agencies, NGOs, civilian organizations and authorities, and the civilian population. And the Boston Globe in 2003 said that the DHS was hoping to recruit 100 million civilians to be part of their surveillance spy operation. Okay, that's almost one out of three Americans. Uh -huh. Now, the Stasi got the record back in the bad old days for one out of 6.5 civilian spies in East Germany, communist East Germany. And again, you can you can read about that. There's a book called Stasi Land, uh, which tells stories about that. And there's a movie called uh, The Lives of Others. And of course, when East Germany fell, the the Iron Curtain came down in 1989. The records that the government had accumulated on all of its citizens were opened up. And this is pre-computer, so people were able to go in and look at their files and see what the government had. It written in their files about them. And of course, this is what the NSA is doing with all Americans and probably all everybody in the world now in their huge Utah data processing center. And this would be then fed to the fusion centers and uh, et cetera. So you have to get an idea of the magnitude of the shared information here. Um, CMOs, civilian military operations, are used in friendly, neutral, and hostile operational areas that we get into military speak, including populated civilian areas in which no other military activity is conducted. It is used to deal with domestic threats in the new war. That would be the insurgents like me. Okay. Uh, the controlling faction of these PSYOP, CMO activities, includes the military, again, blah, blah, blah. Um, in the U.S., the controlling faction is FEMA, Federal Emergency yes. Management agency, which originally under Oliver North was the Federal Emergency Military Authority. And he's the guy who put together Operation Rex. And Operation Rex got our our many, many uh, detention centers. What do you call those things? Uh, there's supposed to be all these uh, detention centers FEMA all camps. over America yeah. now FEMA uh, where they can. FEMA camps. FEMA camps. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where they can take uh, insurgents like me and go lock them up and torture us or whatever, right. you know, they want to do kill us. Uh, so FEMA is in a controlling position, the Department of Justice, the CIA, and other 
agencies, including the FBI, the DHS, and the NSA. Again, civilians are used as irregular forces. Um, I wanted to mention just a little bit about PSYOPs because this is so fascinating. <laughs> you, you might have some insights. Psychological operations are a major part of the new war and a core part of CMO, civilian military operations, yeah. combined with capital EW, electronic warfare, and capital CNO. Um, boy, I'm tell you what, is a, what is a com uh, computer network operations? PO, psychological operations, involves synergistic coordination of PSYOP. Now we get into more of these, you know, acronyms. MILDEC, which is M-I-L-D-E-C, uh, acronym for military deception. OPSEC, which is operation security. And EBO, capital EBO, effects-based operations. PSYOP units work within the civilian population as irregular forces to attack target audience, which includes targeted individuals, in the area of operation AO, which is the battle space, and PSYOP operators first profile the TAs and the TIs mm -hmm. to devise themes to attack their TAs, target audience. Uh, the ultimate goal of the PSYOP is to modify the behavior of the TIA by destroying their will using a relentless attack consisting of painful triggers. So these themes are developed to, to send messages and eventually they want to get an anchor, which, which is a trigger which gives you a certain emotion and then they want to they use that, uh, they'll trigger that anchor over and over again with whatever visual or audio or uh, stimulus. So it's a basically stimulus response program, which is very sophisticated, uh, again, to destroy the will this is in their documents, of the target uh, audience or individual. Then the, a type of audiovisual product known as a SIACT includes agents of action. These would be the uh, surveillance role players. These would be the citizen spies. Often, often the, the uh, uh, DHS, Department of Homeland Security, will actually go to actors' guilds and find unemployed actors yeah. and put them to work doing these psi acts. Yeah. So now that I think about it, Paul, you know, now that we've lost in America our manufacturing base and our yeah. industrial base, uh, now it seems that you know the, the whole economy is based on right. on this national security yeah. establishment. <laughs> so we can true. make a living by screwing our, our fellow you know Americans. Right. What a great system, huh? Yeah. And so Eventually, what they want to do, they use these SIACs, uh, uh, these agents of actions conduct these SIACs who carry out plays, this is the street theater, in the presence of the TIA, and every single channel of communication that the TIA uses for information is interfered with. So if you're on the internet, they're going to yeah. jerk around with that. If you're on the phone, they, they're going to, you know, they, they're mess with that. Yeah. And uh, they can spoof these things. They can, they, they talk about spoofing you know, your emails and they'll, they'll jump in and pretend to be your friend and give you a weird message uh, or, you know, whatever. I mean, they, this certainly happened to me. Yeah. You really you don't know who's on the other end. Um, so uh, PSYOPs are very integral part of this. This is be another word for the, what we call the gang stalking. Uh -huh. uh, and again, it's part of a political war, part of an information war. And by the way, political warfare is a translation of a German term which I'll try to pronounce, which probably don't do it justice. Welton Schwag's Krieg. Welton Schwag's Krieg. Worldview warfare is what that means, which means the scientific application of terror and propaganda as a way of securing ideological victory over an enemy. Yeah. Okay, remember, uh, remember what uh, uh, Joseph Goebbels said, head of, head of the Ministry of Propaganda, he said, uh, um, truth is the greatest enemy of the state. Yeah. Nothing has changed. In America, truth is the greatest enemy of the yeah. state, state, and this is how they're going to destroy those who would dare to speak the truth. And a lot of people use, a lot of researchers, at least some, use the terms PSYOP and propaganda interchangeably. So one could look at our mainstream media now as, as, as a PSYOP. Yeah. Um, oh, so... Yeah. Uh, only yeah. Way to look at it. Yeah. 
And since your background as a PhD in psychology, I thought you were particularly, you know, uh, able to kind of comprehend what's going on here, you know, uh, right. with these uh, with applications, uh, the, the kind of the physical applications. Again, this is covertly done um, by, you know, I, f I figure there must be at least 20 or 30 to 1 uh, of these uh, surveillance role players or agents of right. action to the TIs, the targeted individuals, but I don't know. I'd, I'd like to have better numbers. I don't really have numbers, but, but there's a lot of people out there either volunteering because it makes them feel good or getting part-time or full-time pay to harass and surveil and, uh, and screw with. Um, you know, you know as, after, there was a certain stage in my process where I, I just said, well, they're fucking with me, you know? But they are. And, and then my own, they're fucking with me. And, th and then I realized that, and I said, well, I'm going to fuck with them, you know? And so it's like, then I realized, okay, you know, they're on a script. And there, a lot of them are not good actors. Right. So if you fuck with them back, they'll give you this blank, blank look. They, they're they out of their league. But, but with this uh, C4 ISR, the communication between the these mobile nodes of command and control centers and these nodes out on the street who are interacting with you, they can communicate very rapidly with these people. So if you fuck with them and say, and say uh, something, they can be within a second, they can get a response from somebody else. So, so this is a command and control situation uh -huh. where the person on the street is like a private in an mm -hmm. army. Yeah. And he is carrying out orders from a commander, a local commander, chances yeah. are, could be a virtual commander. But we have to understand that, you know, that's how the system works, that these people have this enormous capacity for communication. Uh, and then and then I on this on this bestiary of terms, I also include terms of some of the new weaponry. Uh, that they have at their disposal, which of course, now we could have 25 shows on that because yeah. now we're talking about all the black budget projects that have have been uh, carried out by a coordination between the major corporations like Raytheon and the military. And, you know, then Raytheon and, and all these Northrop Grumman, they sell these toys to the military. And, you know, each one does something more amazing than the one before it. Um, so, but, but I kind of at this point want to, well, let, let me give you an example. Uh, tactical Mobile Networks, TMN uh, slash DR, digital radios. Digital radios use MANET, capital M-E-N-E-T, mobile ad hoc network that is based on the mesh network standard developed by DARPA, the U.S. Army, and the Office of Naval Research, ONR. Each node contains wireless routers and omnidirectional antennas and can send and receive data. Mobile nodes create mobile mesh network with each other. So in these in these local node, in these local command and control centers, the C4 ISR, nodes can move around independently and the whole thing can shift uh -huh. as needed. As the TI moves going across the state border or going into Mexico, for instance, or Canada or yeah. wherever, uh, uh, they, they can communicate with nodes elsewhere. This is how they do it. See, this was a big mystery, yeah. you know, heretofore for me and I think many, many others. Uh, but we actually have the latest military technology being They're applied. And us. guess yeah. what? You are the enemy. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is, this is, you know, this is a nightmare scenario. The American dream has turned into the American yeah. nightmare. Uh, at least for some, and uh, um, oh, all and of this everybody. endless supply of money and resources. For everybody. What's that? For everybody. This isn't just well, you. We're all yeah, targets of this. We're all targets. And, and right. my, watching you go through this, and this is such valuable information. Everybody needs, I'm going to make this a mandated video. you got to watch this video. Uh, <laughs> It's so, actually, Catherine and I yesterday were talking about this. How pitiful is this? How pitiful is this effort being put together to subjugate human consciousness? You know, my degree in psychology, I wasn't interested in brain psychology. I just couldn't get into it. I knew that uh, uh, um, clinical psychology was a racket. 
uh, all done through the dramatization of illnesses or the creation of illnesses to sell pharmaceuticals. I wasn't interested. I've been in organizational development for 30 years, so there was no, nothing in that field that I could read that would give me more of a background than I had. So I chose consciousness studies because I know what's going on now in this world is a grand awakening. And <clears throat> what I see of all, with all the things that you've elucidated and you've done such a wonderful job, and we're going to keep going on this, you've done such a wonderful job. This is a pitiful um, attempt by these Satanist, pedophile, uh, the dregs of the, of, the, of the scum of the earth to try to subjugate human consciousness, to try to keep us from evolving. You can't capture human consciousness. It's like uh, trying to tame the Amazon River. It's just, it's, it's, an, it's, it's an anthema to what we are. We're freedom. We're expansion. Or everything they're trying to pin us down to not be. And I see cracks in their armor all over the place. First of all, when you have to spend this much money for these toys, that's ridiculous. Uh, second of all, all the effort and all the killing and all that, you, what? We're still coming at them. We're still there. We're still a big problem. We have people downtown who are surveying the, surveilling the population. They have meetings. We know who they are. They know who we are. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's an incredible game that they're going to lose because they have to work through structures that are non-human. The command and control structure of the typical pyramidal um, psychopath magnet, I'm just going to call them what they are, they're just psychopath magnets. Are is so clunky and so outmoded. That's how they. That's the matrix they kept us in for nine thousand years, and it's coming apart. It can be outperformed by any different configure. The configurations I've worked with are autonomous teams that have outperformed the triangle organization in, in every field. We're individual actors who can come together. We can do things. We don't have to call our boss on the cell phone. We don't have to report in and get our, our, uh, our $100 uh, notified. In Germany, they give them a, they give it, uh, they give governmental informants a 10% flat tax break. So you have to be registered. You have to report into an organization that probably reports to a, a a non-GMO that reports to a government organization that reports, it's, it's ridiculous. And that's a ridiculous system that they have to work under. That's why, in my opinion, they're move, they want to move toward AI because AI is much faster. See, the AI can re-strategize and give their men in the field fast information. But I think, uh, Catherine finds other problems with it. But I think the problem they're going to have with AI is AI works on intelligence. And intelligence has to be real. I've never seen anything that these globalists have produced that's been anything but psyop, misinformation, uh, bad information. If they're going to have to work with real information and their AI that learns as they go, it's going to know they're giving them bad information. I think they're dead in the water on AI because I don't think they can trust AI, my opinion, and I'm a psychologist, my opinion, they can't trust the AI to do what they're told, to do blindly what they're told because we're talking about an intelligence. Uh, now, I don't know what your opinion is on what I just unloaded on you, but I think that what you've, what you've uncovered is an incredibly deep, dark system that is marginally functional. Because if it was fully functional, yeah, we wouldn't be dancing around. We wouldn't be on the internet saying this. What do you think, doctor?
Well, you know, I, I think we are up against an enormous uh, evil and enormous uh, resource and enormous coordination. I, I, you know, you talk about how Catherine Horton uh, emailed me and said that, you know, when she interviewed you, you yesterday, that you said maybe the best response would be, you know, have small autonomous groups, yes. um, you know, acting organically. Well, they understand that. And they, that's what they've tried to do themselves with the 4G ISR, yes, I or IRS. Um, the, the command control, computers, uh, communications, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance. This, these are mobile units. And so, uh, and, and they have CFR statements saying, you know, we want civilian forces to be able to work independent of yes. the government independent of external orders. In other words, we want pe th this whole operation to just take a life of its own so that, you know, they can, they can squelch the bad guys, which is the insurgents. It's, it's us, you know. Yeah, but they can't, um, they can't do it. So I'm saying that, that it, I would like to think that you're right, but meanwhile, I think we got our work cut out for us, right. you know, well, in you a huge way. I'm, I'm very glad that we have you on the case, and Dr. Catherine Horton is a, uh, uh, obviously, you got tremendous uh, gifts and abilities and knowledge uh, as a physicist, which can be applied here, understanding. Um, and she's got energy and she's pissed. You know? Right, right. <laughs> How dare they, you know? And of course, she's out there. But, you know, when I studied, uh, when I studied uh, mind control for a year back in 2012, uh, it was a very depressing year because, again, I, I realized that there was an interface between sense and mind control and that it's coming out of these satanic programs and uh, that the goal is to destroy free will. Yeah. The, the goal is to destroy humanity, uh, to replace it, you know, with some transhumanist uh, cyborg uh, race that is, you know, good slave uh, yeah. material and then just get rid of the rest of us. So we are up against the ruling elite, uh, whereas G. Edward Griffin said, uh, the problem is that the people who rule our society want to destroy it. And, you know, he's talking about the CFR yeah. and all these, these agencies like that. So um, the other problem, of course, is that Americans have been victims by this propaganda, psyops, terrorism, uh, to the point where, um, you know, people are kind of psychologically in retreat. You know, it's like right. they want to put, a, put a, uh, a big wall around themselves. Don't bother me. Don't tell me anything bad that's going to make you know, make me nervous or, you know, put me in a right. dangerous position. Yeah. Um, this is what has to break down. Somehow these people need to, to step up. You know, they need to lose their fear yeah. and step up to, to really realize what's at stake, which is humanity and free will and, you know, everything beautiful about, about life. These guys want to wreck it. Right. So I, I agree with you, but I, but I, I do agree with you, and I, and I appreciate your insight and optimism. I think we got a we got a lot of work to do. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And I think the first stage, I know Catherine and I talked yesterday or the day before, <clears throat> the first stage has to be them seeing what we're seeing now. That's the first stage. We have to rebrand 007. We have to change the perception, and that's the first thing. And you could and we when I was working with team-based environments, we did study special ops by U.S. Forces Special Ops, and they do work autonomously, but you have to work. You see, the, big, the biggest problem they're going to have is in order to control this many people, you have to use the triangle organ. You have to use a pyramid. That's the only way a few can control the many. And autonomous teams, working individual, is, um, is the actual opposite of the command and control. So even though you would have an autonomous team in a corporation or in a military, they still report up through the structure. And there are still things that they're not autonomous on because they have to be controlled by the pyramid. It's, it's like they've got a structure that's breaking down that can't keep up with or move with autonomous activism. And, you know, I, I know that this is a dangerous thing to propose. And I know that we cannot work through governments to do this. 
I know that we have to be autonomous actors. We have to be the classic insurgency. And the first, I think the first psychological operation that we need to do, this is my opinion, and, and you and Catherine and the other TIs really, really need to get involved and chime in on this. But I think letting them know what's going on, the research that you've done over the last six months with us, and what you revealed, and what Lauren Murray is revealing, and what Catherine is revealing, is the first step in breaking this up. Because there, there's got to be more of us. There's got to be more of us. And they've got to realize, the people that are working for them have to realize what side they're on and what, what their actions are leading to for their children, for their wives, for their loved ones. And I know, I, I know many people have said that way before, but uh, I think we need to approach this thing with hope. I think we need to uh, yeah. be brave and, and march right at it, my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Catherine's website is what, Stop007. Okay, yes, so she, in her in her excellent presentation on her website, and in based on her own experience, she is attributing this program to the intelligence agencies in Britain. Yeah. I've talked to other uh, TIs over internet, you know, email, uh, perhaps somebody who doesn't want to be identified, uh, who believes that, you know, they've done a lot of research and they're smart right. and they've identified it's the problem is the local police. And then others would think, okay, the problem is, you know, these citizen spies, these yeah. uh, surveillance rule players. So what I'm trying to do in this, in this particular, you know, session, this interview, um, is, is show the magnitude of this thing. Yes. In other words, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like the, you know, the six blind men in the elephant story yeah. in India, you yeah. know, and, and they, they're all blind and they're all trying to figure out what an elephant is. And the guy touches the leg and he says, oh, the elephant's very much like a tree, you know, yeah. and the other guy grabs the tail and says, oh, the elephant's just like a rope, you know, and, and uh, the other guy yeah. grabs the ears, oh, it's just like a big fan. Yeah. Well, you know, they're all getting a part of it, but we need to understand the whole of it. And, yes. and uh, that is a tall task because uh, these people have been working on this through the generations, through the decades, uh, uh, with black ops, with classified uh, operations, with enormous amounts of money. And now they're unleashing it yes. on the public of the world. And as I say, and I wish I had numbers, um, you know, I think the majority of TIs do not know what's happened to them. So they are in a position of being uh, psychologically destroyed and physically destroyed yes. by the directed energy weapons, without knowing what's happening. So this is really a this is really a hell situation for them. It's it's perhaps the minority that actually goes the next level and figures out what's happening to them. And then what I hear and see on on these some of these conference calls of TIs that I've been involved with is you know. This person talking about their symptoms and this top person talking about their symptoms and oh my God, this happened to me and oh my God, blah, blah, blah. And now I'm on the street, blah, blah, blah. And you know, and, and yeah, it, it you know pulls your heartstrings and it's bad, it's terrible. But what I don't see in those conference calls is an understanding of the whole program yeah. and who's doing it to them. I don't see that. What I see is, and then I'm sure these conference calls are also infiltrated by members of the other side that right. want to control the TI discussion so that it doesn't uncover uh, too much truth yes. and that it sends them down blind alleys. This is exactly what happened with the 9-11 truth movement. It was highly infiltrated from the mm -hmm. get-go and the uh, people would, you know, sow dissension and they would uh, throw misinformation in and they'd create uh, the appearance of fights between members and pretty soon the whole group is just falling apart. Uh -huh. Well, this is how they do it. This is how they neutralize their opposition. So all of our attempts to get together, uh, get, you know, as Christians say, we're two or more gathered in my name, you know, right. Jesus is there. Well, they don't want two or more to gather together. You know, <laughs> they, they're gonna do everything they can to make sure two or more do not gather together. Right. So they will infiltrate every group of two or more, if possible. 
So we have to be very canny and understand the dimensions of this thing, the money behind it, the mentality behind it. You know, maybe even have some compassion for these fools and idiots who are doing it, making money doing this. Right. They're doing it. You know, and and they're in a very compromised position. I would say they're going to hell. That's that's my that's my worldview. You know, so you know that's not a good trade off for them. I don't care how much they're making. You know, they right. they're going to hell is not a good deal. Um, certainly, the John Alexanders and the and the Michael Aquinos are yeah. going to hell. I mean, they you couldn't find a hell bad enough for those guys. No. Uh, but then there's a lot of useful idiots, as Lon said. You know, right. who are just kind of part of a bad system. Yeah. And it's our job partly to to identify the bad system and help these people out of it. You know, it's like stand up, be be you know, be an autonomous person and say no, say no to <clears throat> this criminality. You know, uh-huh. uh, that's really important. I see, I see a lot well of I see a lot of useful useful idiots. I see a lot yeah. of useful idiots. Yeah, I think that I think that's really right. Uh, also, I think that let me throw this in knowing how large organizations work, especially large governments, uh, between the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, the Mossad, there's got to be a lot of infighting. And you were talking about the different software that was used by the, uh, this intelligence agency, that intelligence agency. I wonder how the coordination of all this stuff is going down. Uh, there's got to be competition between these different agencies to get a more control over and, and find out more uh, damning evidence. And also, there's this, there's this other thing about, about organizations. Autonomous units are very dangerous inside of organizations. Uh, in most organizations, you see, this organization was built to command and control top down where the information radiates from the top and goes down to the bottom. And that's great if you're making pills or you're making uh, airplane engines or that kind of stuff. I mean, it's clunky. It's not as fast as the team could do it, but it's clunky. But if you're generating information, it's a whole different story. Because the information has to be generated from a group or an individual. And the generation uh, and the, the information, uh, uh, how can I say, militates against the, the, the structure. So what they've done in modern corporations is they, they create a position called a program manager. And this program manager will ride the, the, uh, the tightrope between the command and control and the generation of these, this new information. And they keep the new information from contaminating, you know, it has to still be under the control. Now, if you can apply this to the spy agencies, they are, inf they are information generating uh, agencies. So they have to be totally controlled because the information can destroy the triangular body in its, in its, in its, in its, in, in its, in its functional state. Mm. So I, I think that, that in addition to seeing the magnitude, which you're, you're doing such a great job for us, honestly, there's not too many of us, and me including, that can do the deep research, come out with uh, palatable information we can, we can digest. And thank you and Catherine for, for doing that, that job. I also think, from my standpoint, that we have to see that we're dealing with a huge, cumbersome, clunky thing that's been going on for as long as I've been alive, and I've been alive 72 years now. It's been, it's been clunking along, trying to do this, trying to control this. Now, sure, they've got a lot of high-tech stuff and they want to use AI, but they're still using people. They're still, they're still using directed energy weapons. They're still using the things that we can find patents on, that we can learn about. We're uh, d disclosing a lot of their secrets. You did today. A lot of these secret programs now are, gonna, are, gonna, are on the internet. And if the people care to listen, they're gonna learn. I, I, do, I don't want people to look at all the money and look at all the effort and look at all these militaries and look at, 
and say, oh, what can we do, man? We gotta, we've got to just be, we got to march into the FEMA camp. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll reprogram us so we can be good little Adamatrons. We're nowhere near that stage. We're nowhere near that stage. So that's, that's Absolutely, the, yeah. Uh, I think you're right. I, this is one concern I had before this interview is, my gosh, is this information going to just discourage people so much that you know they're going to just throw up their hands because no, because of the magnitude of the system, you know? Uh, but uh, I do believe uh, I do believe in God, and I do believe uh, this is not you know that this program is not uh, something in accordance with uh, His will and wishes, you know, and and that uh, you know He He having created human beings uh, is going to be pretty concerned that free will. Uh, and the and the human Absolutely. species uh, persist, and uh, you know these guys all have the mentality that you know they they want to be gods, they want to yeah. replace God, and uh, this is you know the Illuminati, you know uh, mandate of 1776, you know which which has been re-expressed in other documents, but yeah they they want to live forever with transhumanism, yeah. they want to be gods, and they think in a certain way. Um, and I know a lot of these people, they're my friends and family, um, and there are some of them very nice people. Uh, but uh, the, 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 what they would think, and I'm, I'm now referring to a recently deceased uncle who was high in the CIA, um, he, he and my father, who were very close brothers, would assume that humans act on the basis of self-interest. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's, you know, for, for that kind of mindset analysis, and both PhDs, University of Chicago, um, you know, it's, it's like we're all kind of little like self-interest seeking, you know, rats out here. Right. And, you know, and the experts are going to figure out how to to organize this system, you know, which is in a, in a way that is beneficial for the right. power structure. Well, I don't think that we are those rats. I, th I, don't, I don't think we all operate on the basis of self-interest or greed, although in America it has become quite fashionable right. to be greedy. Um, but, uh, you know, this cult of the expert, which we've had for a long time, uh, um, uh, who knows better and knows more and therefore should plan everything, uh, obviously that's falling apart. What, what we need to get back to, I think, Paul, is is our commitment uh, to the founding documents of America. I, I don't think that this should be taken as an opportunity to destroy America. I think we need to lock up the criminals and get people in there who do represent the interests of the of the majority of the people. Um, I think the New Testament is very important <laughs> because yeah. it gives us our 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 place in the in the divine scheme. Um, gives us our model, our prototype of, of uh, you know, who to, uh, right. who to follow. If you take the Old Testament and the New, the New Testament and the Constitution, um, I think uh, America can survive even this. But if you throw that out and then we become a nation of, of greedy bastards doing each right. other in, which obviously this program uh, Wants you to facilitates. Go. Right. Yeah, once you go down this road, you know, and nobody can trust anybody anymore, which certainly does happen. I mean, it's happened to me. Right. Um, as a result of my experiences, you can't trust that person because they might be this or they might be that. Because your your world has now been, excuse my language, fucked with too much. Right. You know, it's like that's what they do. They right. put you in this, in this, in this, this different state, uh, which eventually leads to distrust. So, you know, how do you... How do you uh, negotiate that? Uh, well, that's that's an, everybody's got to deal with that on a personal level. I think, I think you know, for me, uh, Christian faith helps. Um, you want to maintain you know, those values and you want to maintain that standard. Uh, but this 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 is very very dark stuff. This is evil. This is satanic actually. Satanic. This is a satanic evil hateful program, um, and. Uh, so I don't think that there really is much to to help counter that, and except this, these, you know, this this uh, greater spiritual understanding, actually, uh, that myself. Uh, but uh, in other words, it's forcing us to be better people, forcing us to be closer to our spiritual selves. Uh, we have to, or else we're going down, yeah. because this this system is very clever about tearing us down.
It's just what it is to, to destroy. The, the, East, the British uh, East German term is Zersetzung, which means decompose or decomposition. Yeah. Which you're going to just de decompose every aspect of the TIs, the targeted individual's life, you know, their, their, their livelihood, their home, their family, their friends. Take it all. Strip them. Yeah. Uh, so that there's nothing left of that former individual. This is this is total war against the individual. So you know when I say these people are useful idiots, um, they're also very very hateful useful idiots because what they're doing is extremely hateful. Right. Um, we need to understand that. And of course, any TI like Catherine Orton is going to going to know that. You know, right. nobody. But but as you say, as we move towards AI, and these programs can be conducted through artificial intelligence that's a different story isn't it i mean now all of a sudden there's no kind of moral culpability involved except that the system's doing it by itself and and uh, so maybe we have a short window of opportunity now to yeah to expose this well we've got to we got to pull out the stops and do it yeah. you know we've got to we've got to expose it as fast as we can yeah i think that uh I think I, I wrote in here on my notes, uh, this takes the lid, you said takes the lid off, and I say take the gloves off. I think this is, they've taken the gloves off, and we need to take the gloves off in terms of getting information out there and moving, moving against them. We're, we're, we're human beings. You know, I, I, my beliefs are a little different. My belief is that uh, this whole thing is going to right itself somehow. It might be through the intervention of Jesus Christ. I'm not, I'm not sure. But I think it has to right itself because in, in my way of thinking, everything in the materium is cyclical. And there's nothing that I can point to in the, in the physical world that isn't cycled, including my own birth, death. It cycles. That's what we do. So we're in uh, what, what, the, what the yugas would call the yuga cycle, where we're in a time of deep deception and fear. And I mean, it seems like co human consciousness is, is being attacked by every, every side. And, and where can we go? Can they enslave human consciousness? I, I, no, absolutely not. Can't be done. It's a divine creation, and it's an expanding. It's an expanding element. It can't be. It can't be triggered. Now, in terms of my knowledge about consciousness growth or consciousness expansion, and I've I've even written an academic book on it, post-conventional personality. So I've done work in it, and I know what happens uh, as someone moves through life. Uh, life acts upon them. And they, they seem to grow. Most people don't, but there are a lot of people that do. And they grow most, most uh, prominently through dilemmas. One of the things in my studies that spurs ego growth or a larger perspective on reality is the divorce. And my, my first divorce was, oh, God, I can't even, years of agonizing and torture and oh, my God. You know, it was, it was horrible, but I got through it, and I'm a better person because of it, because I have a larger viewpoint. What happens in the, in the growth model that I'm explaining is that new elements come into your worldview and cause you to, it disrupts your worldview. And you can choose to deal with it two ways. One, you can have cognitive distance, which is holding both of them together, or you can think about it, feel it, and integrate it, and you get a larger perspective on reality. And what I've learned is that the people who are at the top of the major, we, can, we have a scale, we can measure this. The people that are on the top of this expanded thing have gone through and experienced a lot of dilemma. And what it creates in them, and I see it in you, I see it in myself and Mindy and Catherine, is a dogged determination to help yourself and other people continue to grow and wake up and see what's going on. And I think we're going through a time when mankind is being put through this keyhole. 
Now, Satanists, I, I, don't know, I don't know how God relates to these Satanists. I have the tendency to think that God's in charge no matter what's happening. He's ultimately in charge. My, my opinion, it's my belief. I can't prove it, but uh, this could be this rogue satanic thing that's taking us down this thing. And it, I, I can't believe that God isn't in charge, my own opinion. Uh, and so if God is in charge and we have to go through this and we have to grapple with this as a, as a human consciousness, then yeah, let's get started. Let's do this thing. Let's, let's expose them. Let's learn. Let's see what's really happening to us. Let's expose all the people that are TIs. Let's get together. Let's do this thing because, I mean, we can sit and wait for Jesus, which, you know, we all probably are, uh, or we can move on behalf of humankind, which I think you're dedicated to, I'm dedicated to, I know Catherine's dedicated to. So there it is. I think that there, there are elements going on here that uh, may look like they're against us. They might be against us. They might be against God himself. They might, I don't know how that whole thing fits together. But I do know that people become better people. They get a larger view of mankind when they're put through dilemmas. If they live a happy life and uh, just have a job, the same job all their life and never have the bumps and never have the thing. They seem to have the same worldview they had when they were 12 years old, when they bite the dust. When they're faced with a lot of dilemmas and they process the dilemmas correctly, they seem to change and they become better people and they become devoted like you are to stopping this thing, to helping mankind. So. So that's my human consciousness talk. That's why when I see we're being oppressed by this cyst, this 9,000 year old satanic system, so big and clunky and expensive and horrible, and I see you and me and all the bright people. Charlie Seven, we interviewed a couple of years ago, that's a TI, they're on, they, they, they park a van out in front of her house to, to that poor woman. She's a highly developed, very intelligent contributor to humanity. And uh, we need to stop it. We need to do every, we need to pull out the stops and we need to get everybody going. Everybody, this needs to be a mandated video. You, you've uncovered so much today and it's, it's so enlightening. I really, I can't thank you enough. Well, what, what do you think of that tirade? Well, I told, thank you very much for it. I, I agree, and I appreciate your your efforts, you and Mindy, on this. Uh, it's, it's enormous. Uh, you know, your contact now with Dr. Catherine Horton, who I think is uh, brilliant. You know, brilliant. very very gifted, brilliant woman who who understands what's happening to her, um, and has the energy and the skills uh, to communicate with others and to develop a strategy. Right. Uh, this is where I see uh, her very, very being yeah. very strong in yourself. Um, uh, you know, let's 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 find a strategy. Let's move forward. Let's uh, right. uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a pull out the stops, as you say, to expose this and to defeat this. Uh, right. Working on behalf of others, because uh, Marshall Thomas said, you know, this this weapon system is going to be uh, perfected, and then when it is, it's going to be used on humanity. You know, this is. Right. It's not going to be just used on the TIs. It's going to be used on any and everybody. Right. So, uh, in a sense, we are kind of the uh, buffer yes. right now uh, between this very, very draconian uh, evil system and humanity as a whole, which, right. in a, in a certain way, is is a, is an honor. It um, is an honor. You know, it's like I guess I would rather be in this situation than not. Uh, in other words, rather be in the situation than be on the other side as a, right. you know, as a citizen spy or working for the NSA or whatever. Uh, and maybe I'd rather be in this position than being a, uh, you know, oblivious uh, citizen right. who is uh, not aware of it. You know, uh, in other words, this needs to be done. And it's very important that it's done. 
and it, that, it, that it is done, and, and therefore it's somewhat of an honor uh, to do it, but a very painful one. And we, we really haven't talked yes. about my symptoms yes. much. I'll get into that at some point, because I, I would hope that we can continue this discussion as we yes. go down this 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 road of uh, of strategizing and getting more information as to what it is that we yes. have to we have to combat yes. to survive and to help others. So I really uh, you know I think we got a lot of good information yes. out on this one and I and I appreciate your efforts you and Mindy so much. Oh you're amazing. You're you're my main warrior on this topic. You see and what's interesting about this is because you know there's two aspects the psychologist looks at always looks at the content, what's going on, what's informational, and what's the process that's making this content work. So you filled in so much content today, and I just wanted to put it into the, to the context of the process that they have to use to make this thing work. And the process is that I think we need to use to short circuit it. And I don't think we're any less equipped I mean, considering, I consider God to be on my side. I don't consider us to be any less equipped than they are. But I think that we should know all these weapon systems, these acronyms, uh, and how much time and effort, it's, uh, I, I, they're working on this so hard. I mean, over over the decades, over you know. Over the decades, probably over nine thousand years, they're working on this thing, and we're still so human consciousness. We're still surviving. We're still going to kick their butts. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. And thank you so much. I mean, I know that you you're uh, kind of on a little bit of a holiday. Although, if you're like us, you get up in the morning and you do the right thing. It's probably research. It might be a podcast. But you're going to do the right thing, and it doesn't matter whether you miss a day on the beach because you've done the right thing that day. And I think that's so wonderful about you, and uh, thanks for being there. Thank you, Paul, and, and it's been a very, very good show, I think, and look forward to the next one when we do it and keeping in touch and, and developing our strategy with uh, Dr. Catherine Horton, who we you know, I'm in contact with now. So, yeah. I've, I've got a couple of videos coming out this week that will uh, uh, further fluff out ways, processes that we can use. And I'll, I'll get them to you right away. And then I would love a conference call just for you and I and Catherine and anybody else. And I really do want to encourage any TIs to realize that you're not alone. Uh, get in touch with us. Uh, you can call. Uh, Pineconeutopia. Uh, gmail. Write us. We'll forward your stuff to Eric, Catherine, whoever can help. We're getting a pretty good database of people. Eric was telling us that he's communicating with one-on-one -on -one with TIs already. So we're getting a uh, kind of something that I'm not sure they thought that they would encounter. And. Uh, since we have human intelligence and human creativity, they're going to be watching us because we're unpredictable. So there we go. Thank you very much, Dr. Kallstrom, and I'm looking forward to our next conversation. And we'll be we'll be in contest next week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Bye bye.